Hello and welcome back to Planescape Torment. Where we last left off, well, we uh, helped out that zombie worker. Can we go and open up this door? We can. Now it looks like that heads up, which we will definitely need to go at some point. Door is locked. You will need a key. Ooh. Did I... Do a bad... I have a feeling I probably would have should have been smart and used the key before, you know, handing it over. Number 201 has been inked across the forehead of this corpse. The ink has run down his eyes, cheek, and jaws. Followed the ink tears into the corpse. Uh, tears or tears? Down the corpse's face. Nose run into uh, stitching sealing corpse's lip and it caught uh, what looks to the corner of a note stuck in the corpse's mouth. Tried pulling the note out. Note is mingled with the ichor of the zombie's mouth. If you tried pulling the paper through the cross stitches, it would tear the paper to shreds. Hacking the corpse to get it, uh, looks like it'll destroy the note. You need to find a delicate way to remove the stitches before removing the note. Use a scalpel to cut through the stitches. Definitely slice through his uh, stitches, uh, sealing the corpse's mouth, and the jaw sags open. Carefully pull the note from the corpse's mouth. Despite the condition of the paper, the writing on it, it still appears, are, appears to be le legible. Examine the corpse again. Sorry about slicing those stitches. I just had to see what was in your mouth. Corpse's milky white eyes stare at you vacantly. Okay. Inventory. Note from Corpse 2001. Uh, foul smelling uh, note retrieved from the mouth of the mortuary zombies. Looks like it was sewn uh, into the corpse's mouth by accident. Despite its conditioning, the writing is legible. Please, to whatever dustman reads this, I beg you. I know my legal obligation in terms of the dead contract, uh, but I'm prepared to offer more than my signing fee. If you cremate my body rather than raising it, I'll have arranged to have this note be left with my body upon my death. If you're reading this, then please use this note as instruction and accept the results of exchange for my con contract to duty. Let my contract serve uh, as the key. Looks like the corpse uh, was too late in preventing the raising, but you notice uh, beneath the writing is a diagram. Looks like the directions for folding the parchment into a strange pattern. If you're ever capable of examining an object further or performing an action with the object outside of the world screen, a use button will appear on the object in the examination screen. This button allows you to manipulate an item through dialogue if you wish. Okay. 1201. Foul smelling note, a strange looking diagram uh, beneath the writing. Looks like it's instructing you to fold the corners of the note so they're point. Uh, points touch the center. There's a series of strange marks on each corner. One mark in the upper right, two marks on the lower right, three marks on the lower left, and no marks on the upper right. Hmm. Well, let's see here. Let's try... Upper right. Uh... Lower right. Upper left, upper right. As you fold the upper right corner back in the center, the lower left corner mirrors the action until all the corners touch in the center. You watch for a moment and the corners of the paper rise up, turning the note into a small four-sided paper pyramid. Open size of the pyramid. Peel back the size of the pyramid and the paper disintegrates to dust. Inside a small triangle-shaped earring catches the light and gleams brilliantly. Take the triangle earring. We've got stuff. 
See uh, this small earring from the folding note in the mouth of one of the walking corpses in the mortuary. It's a beautiful earring, but despite its beauty, all it seems to do is remind you how strange this world you've woken up is. Some items are magical, but require that they be identified before they can be used. Hmm. <clears throat> May need to take it to someone with a higher lore skill than you or your party members. Okay. Well. <coughs> can put it in my ear just to uh, avoid cluttering up my inventory. Also, speaking of, let's uh, put bandages in our quick inventory slot. Hmm. Let's see here. Did I ever look into this? No, I did not. Ragged paper looks as cut out of a book uh, written in tight crab or er, crab script. Uh, Sixteen five thirty seven. Drunk chest wound cause of death. Mauling. Ebelshai. Collector. Pox three. Commons paid. No possessions. Uh, cause of death. In terminal or in indeterminable. Age of Shell prevents identification. Collector Farad. Okay, of course. Three commons paid. No possessions. Stripped. Knife marks evidence of from dissection. Ooh. Uh, fifth night. Scarred Shell. Cause of death. Interminable. Scars do not appear to be the cause of death. Shock trauma. Farad. Uh, fist irons. Hmm. Uh, 13 commons, middle table, receiving room, blah, 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 blah. As with previous entries, the shell ferret has brought to a sign of having been prepared. I have asked uh, inmate Emmerich to launch an investigation in the matter. Furthermore, entry 1654-42 is one of Farad's gang. I've seen this individual before. I asked Emmerich to pay heed to how this man died. <laughs> <coughs> My bad. Cause of death slash marks. Hmm. Well, that's pleasant. Mm-hmm. Let's see, you're the librarian. Ah, we can examine this guy. Bandages covering the body soaked with blood, even though this corpse looks several days dead, blood still trickles from its rune wounds. No indication how the body died. Clumps his chest. Truly nauseating. Has yet to remove the internal organs. Tearing it. Hmm. Charles is named Murky Lake, where he smells like cross between vinegar and formaldehyde. Can I take that? That would be embalming fluid, I think. Hmm. Got to check this out one sec. Okay, I think I figured out some more things for me to do. Like this zombie worker. Corpse 985 stopped dead in his track. Judging from the condition of its left leg, it looks as some sort of tomb rot or corpse mold is eaten through its knee. The corpse is wobbling unsteadily back and forth, trying to keep its uh, balance. Let's try to help the corpse balance. You reach over the corpse's left arm and help steady it. You grab its arm, however, the corpse suddenly sways to the right as you end up tugging the corpse rather than steadying it. Ah, chief, you might not want to... There's a crack from the corpse's left leg and the body falls like a dead tree. Its torso strikes the stone flagstones and shatters like a rotten melon. Filth and ichor, uh, 
gurgle from the cavity. To your surprise, no one seemed to have noticed the corpse collapse. Even stranger, left leg remained standing where the body was, as if at attention. After a moment, the leg falls over with a wet thump. Gaze upon the putrefied remains of the corpse, you notice that its left arm still seems intact. Snapped from the torso during the fall, that appeared to have been touched uh, by the tomb rot that has spread through the rest of the body. I wonder if I can make use of that arm. I mean, it should have a finger. Heavily stitched corpse shuffling back and forth. Uh, number 506 was stitched on his forehead and along the side of his neck and his right arm. Back the skin of this uh, peeling corpse seems to be sewn up with so many stitches, its skin looks like a bizarre street map. Seven stitches. Stitches encircle the corpse, running from its arms, across the chest, up to its neck, and the damp mass of white hair. As you follow the crossroads, stitches you notice someone has jammed a needle in the corpse's forehead. The needle is attached to a thread, stitching up the side of the scalp. You could probably unravel it if you had something to cut the thread. Well, cut the stitch with the scalpel and pull out the needle and thread. You slice the thread neatly with the scalpel and pluck out the needle uh, and pull the stitches out. As you do, the skin covering the forehead peels back to reveal the corpse's chalk white skull, where to your surprise, the number 78 has been chiseled. Seems you got two designations there, corpse. The corpse stares straight ahead, oblivious. Interesting. But hey, we got a needle and thread. And this left arm. Triangle earring, spool, and living bodies. Let's see here. No way that way. Okay, there are... Blood is still fresh. Embalming fluid. Yay. More embalming fluid. Container is locked. Interesting. Dried blood. Okay, special, ooh. Two to eight hit points, plus one to armor class. Used only by the nameless one of Mort. Seal jar of embalming fluid loses as preservative for dead bodies. As an added benefit, the smell of fluid is more than sufficient enough to mask the smell of any rotting bodies used on. Effects are temporary. Not permanent, but hey. Slight bonus to, um... Armor class is not something to sneeze at. Um, tap her, get her attention, give her thread and embalming fluid. Not missing a beat, Iveen uh, snaps the thread from her hands and hooks it around one of her talons. Begins sewing up the corpse's chest. She then takes the embalming fluid and begins to apply a layer to the corpse. Wait. Within minutes she has finished, she clicks her talons, turns to face you. She's surprised, she extends her hand and drags her talons along your arms and chest. Uh, keep playing zombie? Looks like you have a new friend, Chief. You two need some time together, or... Keep playing zombie. Trace your arm and chest, suddenly notice she seems to be examining her scars. She withdraws her talons, clicks them twice, then bends forward and examines some of the tattoos on your chest. Hmm, <clears throat> who writes on you? Hybers do that? No respect for Zomfies. Zomfies, not paintings. She sniffs and pokes one of your scars. It's one bad shape. Many scars. No preserves. Talon suddenly hook into the thread you brought her and lightning she jabs another talon into the skin near the one of your scars. It feels barely more than a pinprick, but it looks like she's about to start stitching you up. Well, I guess let's let her work. Updated my journal. Sensation is curiously painless as IV begins to, uh, Stitch up your scars. When she's done, she sniffs you, frowns, stabs her finger in the embalming fluid. Within minutes, she has dabbed your body with the fluid. And strangely enough, it makes you feel better. It may be the second time in my life. I'm thankful I don't have a nose. 
Abby puts the last touches on your body and gives you another sniff. Nods and makes shooting motions with the hound. Done! Go! Go! Well, we have gained one extra hit point. Which, um, it ain't much, but, uh, hey. Uh, something's better than nothing. So, let's see here. Completed. Fetch and bombing key for Vaxis. Fetch and bombing fluid needle. Okay, so. We've completed two quests. Hooray. Let's head upstairs then. Mortuary. Third floor. Well, this place sounds nice. Nothing. Nothing. Charcoal charm. Hmm. Because charcoal is a charred bone fragment of some creature. Perhaps a finger or bone or talon. Very symbols when scratched on the surface. Scratching is so faint you've almost missed them. Temporary protects users against flames and extreme heat. Use a charm. Uh, the power of bone is snapped and both halves of the ground into powder. Then use charcoal dust rubbed over the heart of the user. So... A temporary protection against uh, some sort of fire. Some junk. Collection of junk. Small springs, broken bowls, cracked ear or two. Looks like someone felt these pieces might be useful one day. They seem pretty useless to you. And yet we are going to carry them. Ooh, more needle and thread. And there we have a dustman who wants us uh, more dead than we are, so we're going to avoid saying, you know, hi. Also, uh, you there, hold! Are you lost? Uh, yeah. I will summon a guard to direct you out. Hold a moment. Um... We gotta go. That's when the stakes bent back, then claps his hand together and sharply three times. Response, great iron bell shells trolling through the mortuary. Alright then. Ah! Damn. Well, I did not want this to turn into a bloodbath, but, um... Die. Grab everything. Ooh, knife, club, some more earrings. Let's see, scalpel does one to three piercing. Jagged knife is one to three slashing. Copper earring is nothing. One to six crushing. There we go. Hello. Um, well. If you do not want to fight me, let's, you know, not fight. It looks like you are planning on fighting me, however. Might be useful. Phrase room is common and worn by the Dustman faction. If odd, must you smell to them? Dustman rolls are com cosmetic to size. Even if you appear armed with a dagger, you'll be uh, do damage according to the weapon you have uh, equipped when you put the disguise on. Switch weapons with disguise on. Rub disguise will be nullified. Okay. So. That should keep people from trying to kill us. Maybe. Yep. 
Archway reminder message. Third and last request for the pride bar. In this place, tell me and I shall go to the hive market and purchase another one. I have no objection to maintaining the contracted workers, but I've been trying to repair the skeletons and the bolts are wedged in so tight I can't get them out. Also, some logs and storage cabinets in third floor have become stuck again due to the heat and I need the pry bar to snap them open as well. Pry bar is indeed lost, so I'll see about procuring services of locksmith and having cabinet locks replaced. Your aid in this matter would be much appreciated. Hey, what's eating you, Chief? Um... Nothing at the moment, I guess. Let's, um... Let's try not to kill too many more people, but that'll be for next time. When we come back, more uh, Planescape Torment. Have a good one, folks.